Hi, my name is Rich Boren and I'm the owner of Cruise RO Water and Technotics and today I'm in Marina Palmera in La Paz, Mexico. We actually have a dealer here in La Paz, a Tom Brown at La Paz Cruiser Supply. So while I was here visiting Tom for a two-week vacation, I figured it would be good to call this a business trip and make a few videos about our water maker installation. So what I plan to cover in this series of videos is where to mount and what to consider when you're installing these five pieces of what is our module water maker. The water maker basically comes in five pieces or modules. Each of those pieces then can be mounted on the boat and plumbed together into their best location it takes use of your space. So I'll review each of the five modules, talk about what it does, what's important to consider during the installation process to kind of make it a bit easier for you. I know I'm a cruiser myself. I know how it is. You look at the manual and think, geez, I need to read all this. Well, the answer is yes, of course, as the manufacturer. But what I hope to do is give you a good feel for how the system works, what these different pieces do, and answer some of the basic questions I get about the installation. So the five modules we'll cover in this series of six videos is module one, the high pressure pump and motor, module two, the RO pressure vessel assembly, module three, which is the pre-filters and boost pump, and then module four, which is called the valving and cleaning assembly and then lastly we'll talk about the remote panel and before we get into those five I also want to talk for a moment about some of the pieces the miscellaneous smaller pieces that come with the water maker it's easy to identify these five big modules but you're also going to be getting some hoses high pressure low pressure of different colors so let's go ahead and talk about those and some of the pieces you get with the water maker in general before we get into the in-depth discussion of the different modules so let's talk about the low pressure plumbing when you open your box that we call box three, marked uh, three of five or three of six, in that box is going to be all your pre-filters and all your loose miscellaneous parts, specifically your low density polyethylene tubing. So let's just quickly review the colors and some general information about it. We supply 30 feet of the blue quarter inch product water line. We'll supply 30 feet of the red brine discharge line. Now those are both quarter inch. Then we'll supply what we call a pickling hose, this orange pickling hose. This doesn't mount anywhere permanently on the water maker, but this comes into play when you go to pickle the water maker. It has some specific ends on the hoses and those help connect to the fittings and when you go to pickle the water maker. So set that aside. It doesn't have anything to do with the install. So don't cut the ends off and use it as some other hose. But you'll need this when you go to pickle the water maker. We then provide a 30 foot hose of the half inch green line. This is the hose you'll mainly be working with. It'll go from your through hole through the valving and cleaning assembly valves into the boost pump out of the boost pump to the pre-filters and in the high pressure pump. There's a reason we provide 30 feet and not 90 feet. So if you're use, if you need more of this half inch line, you need to talk to us because that means you're using more line and you could have more suction in your inlet side of the system than what we designed the boost pump and the basic plumbing for. Typically, we don't like to see more than 10 feet of inlet suction side on your uh, inlet side plumbing. So from the through hole, through the gray valves on the valving and cleaning assembly, into the inlet of the boost pump. I don't want to see more than 10, 15 max. If you need to go over that, we need to talk about your layout and possibly upsizing your half inch green line to three quarter. So don't just... Uh, or to call, people call me and say, Rich, I need three more lines of the half inch line. I usually say, hey, why do, what are you going to use that for? There's going to be inlet plumbing trouble with line loss. 
Then we'll also supply a 3 8 roll of black tubing. This is for specifically for your boost pump bypass on the remote panel and we'll dis discuss it in more detail when we look at the panel itself but this line is going to go from the remote panel to the inlet and outlet sides of your boost pump so that way the boost pump is capable of supplying more flow to the high pressure pump than it needs. So the whole purpose of this bypass loop is to let people with different head lifts, different length of, of line runs, all use the same boost pump and have it work and meet their needs. So whatever the high pressure pump doesn't need in terms of flow rate is sent back to the suction side of the pump using that boost pump bypass regulating valve on your remote panel. This 3 8 line is what's used for that plumbing. So now let's look at the high pressure hose runs. The water maker comes standard with two sticks of high pressure hose, a 3 foot and a 5 foot line. These these hoses are braided stainless steel with a chafe protectant silicon protectant cover over them. On the ends are already pre-swedged swedge lock compression fittings. So if you need longer high pressure hoses and what's supplied, we can provide those for you. If you're ordering the water maker and you think the three and the five are drastically too short, we can ship the unit without the hoses and then you call us and tell us what you need. Or if you already have the unit and you need to turn a three foot into an eight foot, we can either send you a union and a, and a three foot to make it an eight, or we could send you a whole new hose and you send back the five foot and we'll turn it into an eight for you. Now, one thing about this hose, these swedge lock compression fittings and all the swedge lock fittings are on, on our unit are already what we call pre-swedged. The nut and cone and ferrule inside this fitting have already been crushed onto the copper, excuse me, the stainless tube. So when you put these um, on, it's a very simple process of turning the nut onto the fitting hand tight and then a quarter of a turn with your wrench. It's that easy to make a 10,000 PSI seal with these swedge lock compression fittings and that's one reason we like them. They're kind of an industry standard special uh, uh, pressure fitting. They're used on turbine engines. I know you know some people say oh it's a metal to metal seal it's gonna crack. No that, that's just kind of a salesman talk of you know if someone's using a different type of fitting. These swedge lock fittings are used on natural gas combustion turbines and fittings that's vibrating and spinning at thousands of RPMs for fuel lines where if there's a crack in a seal or a leak things go boom. So the 800 PSI of seawater that we're dealing with you're not going to have leaks from a properly installed swedge lock fitting. So these are the high pressure hoses that come standard with the water maker. So also inside the box with all of your hoses and your pre-filter canisters is what we call a baggie of parts. This baggie has all of the loose uh, GA Murdoch compression fittings, a tubing cutter, some valves, a, a little container of silicon grease so you can lube up the Teflon line as you insert it into the push to connect connectors. So this bag right here, when you're done installing the water maker, I, I get this call frequently so it's worth being said. If you're hiring an install guy, this is your bag of parts. There's over a hundred dollars in fittings here. So don't let this just disappear with your install guy. Don't throw these fittings away when you're done with your install. Put them in your spare parts bag. Put them on the boat somewhere because these could come in very handy down the road if you need a spare or there's o-rings inside these if you need to pull an o-ring out to use it somehow. So hold on to this baggie of parts. Don't let it vanish during the installation process and throw it away because I always hate selling someone a four dollar fitting that cost twelve dollars to ship when they had seven of them in their baggie of parts because the way we came up with what fittings go in this bag was basically over the years what fittings are people calling us and telling us that they need well let's just put them in the bag because it's easier to give you what you need than to nickel and dime you down the road for three and four dollar fittings plus shipping so this is your baggie of parts 
make sure you hold on to this and don't lose it.